Welcome to episode 168 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk about why is practicing reserved for doctors and lawyers? It's an outrage. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. All right, this has been a, a really interesting and good week. There's so much going on. I actually took my first kind of business meeting trip that I've taken in a while, and uh, I got to have it in Philly. So I got to drive to Philly. I just made it a really long day. I left at like six in the morning. And I got home at like one in the morning the next day. It's a four hour drive each way. But guess what? I loved it. It was great to get out and around. Philadelphia was was looking good after such a really rough year. It was good to see my hometown alive and getting in the car and just having some hours to like think and open up. It really did did me good. It gets good oxygen flow and just good thought flow. And, you know, I didn't have to be somewhere every second. And it got me thinking um, about doing and going and practicing the things that I preach and practicing entrepreneurship and practicing leadership and practicing content creation. I am practicing podcasting. I had a conversation in, in a marketing group today and this topic came up and we were talking about leadership and teams. And I thought like, why does practicing and the term practicing get reserved for doctors and lawyers, isn't it ironic that these are two of the professions that you would think would be the most important things? Like they involve our lives, right? A lot of a lot of times when there's a legal issue, it involves our lives, like our livelihood and consequences on one side or the other side. Medical profession, same thing. It's our bodies and our health and consequences on one side or the other side. So like who wants somebody that's practicing? I want somebody that's doing and then, like, you know, as I thought about it, but like, this is a term that I think if we overlay it in all these other areas of our lives, leadership, entrepreneurship, content creation, even other things like parenting, it will actually start to give us a little bit more freedom to move about the cabin, if you know what I mean. So um, the very first mention of practicing, I actually looked it up, was in 1421, long time ago. What happened in 1492? Columbus sailed the ocean blue. So before Columbus came to the new world, the world's earliest meaning of practicing was to pursue or be engaged in. And I think that framework of practicing is one that I want to adopt more because there's a lot of pressure to be successful. Shoot, if you look around on social media, especially if you're on Clubhouse and you start and you're in any of the business rooms, specifically in the business rooms, there are more millionaires that I ever knew existed. Everyone in there, it seems, is a million dollar salesperson and had, you know, five and six and seven and eight figure exits from their businesses. And when you start adding that up, you're like, wow, you've had five nine figure exits. Like, what are you even doing here? And so like all this pressure from social media and um, this desire or this need to feel like we have it all together or that we're successful or, you know, I say a lot of things on my podcast and in my content, right? I I like to share what I'm thinking. I like to share my thoughts in the hopes that, you know, they'll help me articulate my thinking better in the hopes that people would hear the content and, and see it and interact with it and maybe be encouraged or, you know, unlock a little spot in their life and get more perspective and clarity on what's going on. However, like when you say a lot of things, there are a lot of expectations that come with that. And I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. When I say things, I don't presume to have them all in place. I'm sharing what I'm thinking. I'm sharing my perspective. I'm sharing my experience. I'm submitting that to those who would watch the content. And there's definitely a pressure there, right? And I like it. I like it because it holds me to a standard, right? Once you say it and verbalize it, then you should be held to it because no one wants to listen to a hypocrite. No one wants to listen to someone who just tells you what to do and doesn't actually do it. Right. That's why that's why, you know, sometimes higher education and people who just theorize all day 
well, those people are the people I would say you really shouldn't listen to as much as someone who is doing it, who is practicing it. When someone who's practicing and doing knows what it's like to face conflict, face friction, make sure that your beliefs can adjust, your theories can adjust so they can stand up to the pressure, so they can push back on the pressure. And when that's the case, well, that's the person that you want to listen to. So it's okay to talk about the things that you believe, the higher, the higher principles that you know in your heart are true, should be true, should be the direction in which you walk. It's okay. Don't be so afraid of saying those things out loud because you're afraid, oh, can I, can I hold up to that level of scrutiny? If you believe it, say it and live it. And yes, yeah, sometimes you might mess up, but that doesn't mean that failing, that falling off to the side isn't the thing that's going to help you stay on the rails more passionately with more conviction because that, that's what life is, right? It's swaying. It's practicing. Think about practicing a sport. You practice and you get the repetitions in and you try different things and different techniques so that you can get better in the game. And so whether it's entrepreneurship or parenting, oh my gosh, parenting, just think about it. If you think that you could just be a good parent out of the gate, oh my gosh. I don't, actually, I don't think anyone that's been a parent for more than you know 30 minutes. Actually, it starts way before the child is even born. I think you automatically know, like, I don't think that I am capable of doing a good job with this. <laughs> and then as your kids get older, right, you, you worry about them. You're concerned that you're making the right decisions. Like, you know, for me, I, I don't want my kids to grow up in a life that's comfortable or spoiled, right? Because we have some resources now that I didn't grow up with. I grew up, you know, without the resources and, you know, working for every little thing. And I grew up, I grew up in the world where there was, there was not an abundance. And now my kids are growing up in a world because of, you know, my wife and I working to build a business and grow a business. My kids grow up with a lot more than I did. And my concern is that, oh my gosh, I need to make sure that they have conviction and conflict you know, fortitude in their lives. And I don't just do what every parent wants to do is want their kids to be happy and comfortable. And so I'm practicing parenting. If you're a parent, you are practicing parenting. Give yourself a break. It's okay. You're going to mess up. You're going to lose your temper. You're going to do a thing, you know, and say a thing. You're like, oh, I don't think I handled that the right way, but that's okay. The same is true in leadership. You're going to try to care for your people and something's going to go wrong and you're going to make the wrong decision. You're going to make a rash decision guess what? It's okay because now you know you can come back and you can lead by making it right. That's part of practicing leadership. You can practice marketing. You can practice entrepreneurship. You can practice serving others. I was in a clubhouse room and a lot of people were expressing guilt. The, the, the topic was giving back and a lot of people were expressing guilt over, oh, I know I should give back more. Oh, I know I just don't have the time. And you can just see the guilt dripping out of that room and the truth is, is like, no, actually, just, just practice. You don't have to volunteer two weeks of your time to like get in the game. Practice. Actually, buy somebody's coffee. Costs you three bucks, four bucks. I don't know. Depends on where you're getting coffee. But you can practice that every day. You can practice letting somebody in front of you in the highway. Doesn't cost you anything. You can practice these things. And if you have a family, even better to practice them in front of your children because we all know. All of a sudden, we see our kids doing something, and we're like, oh, I think I know where they learned that, right? From their mother. No, <laughs> from me. And so I wanted to share the concept with you in, hope, in the hopes that it will free you up from feeling that judgment or being afraid to, to talk about things or your beliefs or your values because of the, the pressure of having to have it perfect. I hope that when you frame this in the perspective of practicing, it will free you up to do, because I listen and I watch the people who do, not the people who say. So I don't think practicing should be reserved for the doctors and the lawyers. I think practicing should be something that is for all of us every day in all of these different areas. Speaking of practicing, I'm practicing some gratitude right now because I'm so grateful you spent some time here with me today. I hope this gives you some perspective and some clarity so it can take some of the pressure and the judgment off of your life and free you up to live in an open-handed way. I can't wait to see you next week. Go out there and practice. We came to fight.